untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu colored samurai, warrior and equipment deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the reason to splash black in such a deck is for Ishin, two heavens as one, a 3 mana 3-4 three, legendary human samurai, saying if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this works very well with all of the new samurai and warrior cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, but it also works well with some of our old favorites like Akiri, Fearless Voyager, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary core warrior, saying whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, we get to draw a card, and now with Ishin we get to draw two cards instead. And then at 4 mana, there's Ryu, Storm's Edge, a 3-3 three, three legendary human samurai with first strike, saying whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, untap it, and if it's the first combat phase of the turn, there's an additional combat phase after this one. So especially with Ishin, we can potentially take a ton of extra combat steps to simply kill the opponent on the spot. And because we're incentivized to attack with a samurai or warrior by itself, it also makes sense to include some equipment to power up the one creature that's attacking, so it can output more damage. So it all works very nicely together. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our one mana equipment, where there's Etro Virtue, one to play, one to equip, giving the equipped creature plus two plus O. Oh. And then whenever the equipped creature dies, we exile it. And as long as a card exiled with Etro Virtue has flying, then the equipped creature has flying. And the same is true for for first strike, double strike, death touch, chase, tax proof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, protection, reach, trample, and vigilance. And our deck actually has quite a few keywords, with Rabbit Battery giving haste, at two mana Lizard Blades with double strike, and then Ryu first strike as well. So we do have a few abilities that the Etro Virtue can soak up. Does not apply to some of the equipment, like Moth of the Skyclaves, which gives first strike and flying, because it specifically looks at the creature once it's in exile, at which point, of course, it's no longer equipped. Then Rabbit Battery is a 1-1 with haste that can also be reconfigured for a single red mana, in which case it acts like an equipment, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus 1 and haste. And then Usher of the Fallen, a 2-1 Spirit Warrior, can also boast it to make a 1-1 token, just gives us some early board presence to apply pressure with, and maybe put some equipment onto. Then at 2 mana we've got a full play set of I Ganjo Exemplar, not one of the more impressive creatures, but still quite synergistic in our deck, as a 2-1 Human Samurai, saying whenever a Samurai or Warrior you control attacks alone, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. So especially once we start taking additional combat steps with Ryu, then those extra plus 1 plus 1 triggers start stacking up, so we can potentially build up this huge creature by the final combat step to potentially kill the opponent in one shot. Then Selfless Samurai is a 2-2 Samurai, giving a Samurai or Warrior we control attacks alone a lifelink until end of turn, and we can also sacrifice it to give another creature we control indestructible until end of turn, so great at protecting our one threat. And Lizard Blades, another reconfigure equipment, so it's a 1-1 with double strike, giving the equipped creature double strike as well. At first I had the core Blade Master in the deck, as a 2-mana 1-1 with double strike, that can give other warriors double strike, but sadly it doesn't apply to samurai creatures, so it wasn't very synergistic if we wanted to attack with one of our more expensive creatures in the deck. Then arguably the most important card in the deck is Maul of the Skyclaves, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike, and it can attach the creature right away when we play it, so especially powerful in combination with Ryu, and then we can move it around for 4 mana afterwards. Then Akiri, besides drawing cards, can also make one of our creatures indestructible if we unattach an equipment from it, so that can be very useful in combination with our cheaper equipment like Etro Virtue or Rabbit Battery. Then a Risona, a 3 3 legendary human samurai with haste. And when Risona deals combat damage to a player, if it doesn't have an indestructible counter on it, we can put one on it. And whenever combat damage is dealt to you, then remove an indestructible counter from Risona. So she shines against controlling strategies that rely on board wipes to clear the board. And then, of course, Ryu is gonna steal a lot of games as well. And then a mana base has a lot of pathways, since we want untapped lands in an aggressive deck. Our creature land of choice is actually a red one, despite the deck being more white than red, since then of the bugbear is cheaper to activate than the alternatives. And then a few of the new legendary lands, Iganjo and the Crucible of Defiance. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit on the slow side without a one drop, but still looks keepable. 
a lot of options on turn two. Opponent on a zombie deck. All right. So turn two. Typically don't want to play Samurai first since we can maybe make use of the ability if we play it later. Now that being said, don't want to expose Lizard Blades or Exemplar to the minus one, minus one from Shambling Gas necessarily. So we might play Selfless Samurai anyway. So our eventual late game plan is going to involve a Ryu with maybe double strike. Uh, eaten life gets rid of our samurai. That's exiled. And a scab can grow the champion by two. So we're under quite a bit of pressure already. Now I can play battery and a two drop. And then it's probably gonna be exemplar. And then next turn Ryu could maybe let the exemplar attack twice. Right, opponent's missing a third land, so that's hopeful for us. If I go for Selfless Samurai, could also start gaining some life back. Although, a Ryu attack with Exemplars, too good to pass up on. Especially if next turn I would get to drop Samurai and Ishin to gain a ton of life as well. This also untaps our creature. So, Exemplar can always block if needed, and a 3-3 first strike, not a bad blocker either. Just uh, a Shin plus equip battery could be quite powerful next turn, if we don't feel like we need to gain life. Secluded Courtyard, a nice new tool for tribal decks. Opponent's gonna pass with 3 mana, presumably holding a removal spell. Okay, so with that in mind, I guess we start by playing Selfless Samurai. Opponent's gonna respond to kill Ryu. And then I can still play Ishin and make a good attack, I think. All right, no removal and response. So we get to play both here and make a great attack with Ryu. Send Ryu with lifelink times two, plus one plus one times two. And we'll get two additional combat steps here too with uh, Ryu getting bigger every time, thanks to the Exemplar. And yeah, that's just too much for the opponent to overcome. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Could use an extra land or two, but we get to play maybe a battery on one. I guess turn two is not all that exciting. Unless we draw a planes off the top, then we can usher equip. And we can still play a second battery. I'll try it. The curve is very low. It's just that our second land comes into play tapped, which is not where we want to be. And eventually Ryu could be nice too. Opponent on a red aggro deck as well. With a reinforced Ronin. So more of an artifact synergy deck. Alright, awesome. Found our land. So now I think I prefer Usher equip over anything else. And then next turn we can equip the Eater Virtue, and then as soon as we drop Ryu we have a pretty sizable creature that can attack. Okay, can make another Hasty Usher. Doesn't play as well into the plan of Ryu take an additional combat step, but gets more damage in right now. Automaton, a good combo with a Ronin, which they can replay every turn to put a counter on it. Serpent so already at 10 life. 
This would be a great spot to find Molotov Skyclaves to fly over. As our opponent plays double battery and stays back. Okay, Selfless Samurai seems pretty good here. Can play it, attack with Usher after maybe putting an extra battery on it. So it's a 4 3, would still trade for Automaton. So I guess we could just play a Samurai and attack with Usher without moving anything. Gain some life in the process. Opponent goes for the trade. Could save Usher, I think keeping Samurai is more beneficial long term. And then could move the battery. In case we draw land for Ryu, or we can play Eater, which maybe sets up a more powerful following turn. Also have the option of attacking with both Ushers, means we wouldn't have gained life, but maybe get in more damage, which arguably is more important here with our opponent at 10. But I also don't mind padding our life total when we know our late game with Ryu is going to be very powerful. Reactor, another good combo with Ronin. Alright, so I could play Ryu now. Although Usher would end up uh, dying to the Automaton. So instead, kind of liking put everything on Usher. Attack with it. And then I can boast as well. And then next turn we can maybe play Ryu, assuming they didn't trade. They could have one mana interaction, given the pause and the fact that they didn't play Ronin. So, let's say they do. They could kill Usher, I sack Samurai to save it. And then... I can still boast. Still better to have the battery on it, I think. Alright, so we don't get to life this turn. But we get to hit for 6 and make a token. So if they do use the reactor, we still have a backup creature at least. And then it's Ryu's time to shine. Alright, double Ronin. That's gonna get out of hand pretty quickly with those reactors. The Ronin can attack. Alright, so now what? If I play Ryu, I get to attack with Usher. Opponent's going to be forced to trade either way. So now I can play Ryu, put a rabbit battery on it, and then attack with both, and then opponent should be dead since the reactor is... 4 mana to activate. So we don't get to trigger Ryu's ability. I guess your opponent can still channel to potentially find a 1 mana removal spell, but not gonna play around that. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a somewhat uh, reasonable hand. Ideally, we find an untapped second land, so we can curve out better. For now, we can play battery on one, and then we've got plenty of equipment to go with Akiri. Up 
opponent has Spankfield Hazard to Guild Battery. Did find the planes. So Lizard Blades seems like the most efficient play here. Also going to be meant by removal. Right, now we can double spell. Don't want to play Akiri until I can maybe draw a card with it right away. Opponent foretells what could be a saw it coming. And a fading hope bounces Usher. Okay, so I could double spell again Usher Samurai. That seems reasonable. Although, given that this is likely a sword coming, I'm not going to be able to resolve Akiri very easily. But that's probably okay. At least the samurai gives us a bit of insurance in the event of a sweeper. And then if they want to hold up counter spells, we can just equip the blade somewhere to get more damage or boast usher. Let's uh, behold the multiverse instead. Serpone goes digging. They're gonna try and find some cheap removal. Probably gonna start by attacking, maybe playing Akiri second main. Don't have the mana to play Akiri and equip anyone. And going for Maul could be bad if they have a Fading Hope. So, yeah, let's start by attacking. Let's see if there's a response. There doesn't seem to be one. Still like resolving Akiri while we can. Although, alternatively, I could equip the Blades and Boast Usher. And then if there's a sweeper, I can save my indestructible creature thanks to the samurai and keep the blades around. And then Akiri could be a nice follow-up if there's like a burn down the house next turn. Whereas if I play Akiri, I can only save one creature and we lose the blades. So maybe that's still better. So I did miss out on a little bit of damage doing it this way, but played around a fading hope better. And then I wouldn't mind seeing a uh, burn down the house. Could see a gold span instead. Ooh, a battle of frost and fire. Similar to burn down the house, maybe a little bit better. I think I still prefer the card draw. And then Akiri can also maybe use its ability to make something indestructible. Rabbit battery. Now the problem with Akiri and reconfigure creatures is that if we make Usher indestructible, we lose the blades instead. I could also play battery, equip Akiri. That way if there's another sweeper, we get blades and rabbit battery back. Next turn Maul on blades and battery gives it three extra power. So that would be lethal. I guess that's also reasonable. Puno keeps all the cards on top. That can be good for me. So a six mana total. Opponent's just gonna pass. Well, I have to mention there's gonna be some instant speed interaction here. We still have Akiri's abilities to use. Question is whether we want to move anything or play a Maul. Don't think playing Maul is gonna work out. We also have the option of unequipping the equipment here so they can attack as creatures instead. So that's a possibility. Although then we might lose out on the card draw from Akiri. So I think we still just attack as is. Right, we get to attack and draw a card at least. Another creature's attacking. We can use Akiri's ability and still get damage in. 
as opposed to them playing a removal pre-combat hazard, so I can use Akiri's ability to unequip Lizard Blades, make Usher indestructible. Opponent's at one. Then with the bugbear is gonna be a nice one. And then I think we just re-equip Lizard Blades and maybe Boast as opposed to keeping up Akiri, which again shouldn't really matter. And then with all our creatures now and a creature land, we should be able to deal one damage next turn. Opponent's got the Sweeper. They could make three tokens with it, as opposed to wipe the board. But then all of the Skyclaves should still get there. That's assuming they also have interaction for Den of the Bugbear. Although that's not entirely true, because given that we had a first strike creature, it would have killed one of the Devils before regular damage, and they could have used the one damage to finish off my token, for instance. Our opponent went with a 5 damage instead, and then the reconfigure creatures can simply cross the finish line onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? It's a little bit on the expensive side. Can play a battery on 1, equip it with Eater on 2, and then Eater would also gain haste if they kill it. Maybe that's still good enough, but. Then we're lacking creatures until we hit Ryu, which is pretty far away. So, maybe it's still worth the shots once we hit a third land for Maul to start flying over. And then, I guess we can play this on red. Now the battery, of course, not a samurai or warrior, so it doesn't benefit from Ryu's ability right away. But against the green deck, Maul should be good, and Usher is a nice pickup, as now we can play Usher, put the battery on it, and hit for three. And that sets up our Ryu a little bit better. I think I'm gonna give up the black mana, in case we need double whites for Maul later. Although I guess given that we have two malls, that's unlikely. So I guess we can uh, still save the black mana and postpone that decision since I'm probably not going to need double red anytime soon. Probably just Lair of the Hydra that's holding priority. Alright, so if they play a big blocker like an old growth troll, we can just fly over. The red mana is a concern. No removal, luckily, just Stormseeker. Alright, we're setting up for Ryu. Hopefully we get a fourth line next turn. Because we're going all in here. Wouldn't quite be lethal with Ryu, but we would put them to one. Chariots to make some ground blockers. They can crew it and attack to copy a cat right away, so that's a lot of power and toughness. So they might be able to threaten lethal next turn as well. Sadly, no fourth land. Can play Akiri, attack and draw. And then next turn, Eater of Virtue would be lethal. And then I gotta hope one blocker is enough to survive. Staying back could be an option, although not a very appealing one. So let's say they play a large creature next turn, give it haste, chariot attacks alongside the large creature. Yeah, we could still conceivably survive. There's blue mana, so could see a goldspan dragon. 
plus maybe some interaction. Akira is most likely going to be forced to chum block. Dragon's Fire kills Akiri, so I'm guessing we're dead. Lair of the Hydra can turn into a 1 1. They can crew chariots, attack, and then the plus one power from Stormseeker is going to make the difference. And exactly 10 damage here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Missing equipment, but just some good old-fashioned Samurai and Warrior synergies. And up against what looks like a Black Sacrifice deck. So they can provide quite a few chum blockers early. Black-White. At least the Exemplar lets us get past Eye Twitch if they keep it back. Shambling Ghast is a little bit more tricky to attack into, as they can chump and then finish off the Exemplar. They could double block, finish off Exemplar. So, opponent's still up on resources in that exchange, but yeah, we have to get past these small chumpers at some point. So maybe it's still the play. Instead of double blocking, they could also just chump with gas, finish off Exemplar, but... Double block happens. I should make sure to have auto-assigned damage turned off in case I wanted to only kill Eye Twitch and not kill Shambling Ghast. But in this case, I think I'm okay with that trade. But for future reference, in the gameplay options, auto sign combat damage is an option you can switch off to potentially not kill creatures like Shambling Ghast. Play Akiri and hope to find some equipment soon. Announcement to start making tokens. And a Maul of the Skyclaves is perfect. Now I might still want to wait on Maul for a turn, so we can double 2-drop instead. And then a Meat Hook Massacre for 2 still doesn't kill Akiri at least. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we can go drawing cards. Second announcements. Alright, we're gonna have to fly over. And then... Don't think anyone on the ground is attacking. And then we'll equip Akiri. And make sure we have white mana left over to potentially use Akiri's indestructible ability. Although, don't expect to need it since most removal from the opponent exiles. So, probably no point in playing Battery as it could just get swept up by a Meat Hook Massacre. They could remove the mall itself, which is probably the worst case scenario. And then we'll have to fight through all these tokens on the ground. Tokens attack. Probably implies that a massacre is incoming. I guess they could massacre for one if I block, and they may not have a fourth land. Although they might also just want to draw cards with announcements. So tough to say. I'm not too upset if they massacre for one. And uh, it's probably worth it to block in that case. Alright, massacre for one it is. So sag this to get one fewer trigger. 
Exemplar is gonna die either way. Indestructible doesn't help. Opponent gets to draw from announcement since they attacked with two creatures. And Raiju is an awesome draw. So let's see here. If I play Raiju, play battery, equip, I can put my opponent to one. Still seems pretty good. If I just give Raiju haste, I guess I could attack for five and then get the extra attack step, send both. That's even better. All right, I think I figured it out. So first combat step, just Akiri. Second combat step, attack with both. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and our hand is okay. Of course, double eater is a little awkward and my land two comes into play tapped. But I'll try it, especially on the draw. We're more likely to find the land we need. Shambling gas, we absolutely have to fly over. But uh, yeah, now we potentially can with Maul. I think I still play Usher. And then maybe next turn, equip Eater, turn 3 Maul. Although then we might be a little bit short on creatures if they have spot removal. Epicure. Alright, so this is the Black Red Sacrifice deck. Have to watch out for Voltage Surge and potentially Deadly Dispute. Could sacrifice gas to give minus one, minus one. Rabbit Battery. I could also play. Yeah, long term, all the Skyclaves is going to be very important. For now, I can set up Selfless Samurai to start gaining life. Or I can play Equip Eater, which is worse if they do figure out a way to sacrifice gas and kill my Usher. So I'll play Samurai and pass. And then if an anvil shows up, at least we have a way to fly over it. A reactor is going to start ticking up. So that's eventually an answer for my creature, but we do have a Samurai to give it indestructible. Alright, so Maul on Usher. Attack for 4, gain 4. It's going to make it difficult for the opponent to win a racing situation. And next turn we're going to stack even more equipment onto it. Synthesizer to go digging. Finds another synthesizer. Do they have a land to play it? They do. Finds another shambling gas. That's fine. They could send the original Shambling Gas, but they're just gonna hang back. Exemplar also pumps Usher. So I guess now the main concern is a Meat Hook Massacre wiping my board. So I'm not gonna wanna play the Exemplar, but I can reconfigure the battery onto the Usher. Which also gives it one extra toughness. And then Eater we can equip as well. And then more red mana is probably fine. So our opponent falls to 9. Now the Eater of course is legendary, so wouldn't necessarily be able to threaten lethal next turn. Exemplar is plus one damage, so we're getting close. Opponent goes digging. 
and they actually had a Meathog Massacre in hand, although it may not be good enough here, or if they happen to have multiple copies. Of course I could massacre away the Samurai, and then the Reactor could finish off my Usher, although that still leaves my Maltha Skyclaves to potentially cross the finish line. Tapped Hive means only 4 mana, and the Reactor is one short of killing Usher right now. There's a Massacre for 2. Sack Samurai in response. Sir opponent doesn't gain any life. Although I guess Shambling Gas can still finish off Usher. Yeah, that's fair. Do have a Rabbit Battery and a Rissona now too. So how about Rissona equip Eater of Virtue to it? That'll make it indestructible. And now the reactor won't be able to take it out. And then next turn Maul can fly over. Synthesizer has to go digging. Finds an anvil. But Maul still trumps it here. They can potentially gain life with Massacre. Although I guess even that doesn't work, because um, Anvil's already tapped now. So yeah, Maul, Equip should be game. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, knowing the opponent's deck and strategy is very important in any game of Magic. And of course we're intimately familiar with the Black Rat Sacrifice deck featured a few days ago. Otherwise we might have made a few mistakes and gotten blown out by... Meat Hook Massacre, or some other removal spell. Alright, so what are the closing thoughts on this Mardu Samurai deck? Sadly, I don't think the Black Splash for two Heavens as one is really worth it. It makes the mana base less consistent, and Ishin is the type of card that's usually a win more card, so it only really helps us when we're already in a favorable position, and doesn't necessarily help us catch back up when we're behind, and that's an important property of cards in Standard nowadays. And then I was quite impressed with Mall of the Skyclaves, giving our creatures flying, so I would focus more on Mall of the Skyclaves and kind of the equipment theme, and all the reconfigure cards also performed quite well, so I was happy with those. And then of course Hakiri seems like a natural synergy, and you could still play Ryu as a potential curve topper, since it still works with our warriors, and has natural synergy with equipment, so being able to attack twice with our equipped creature could potentially win a game that we would otherwise be losing. So I think Ryu still has a home in this red-white warrior equipment deck, at which point if we introduce more warriors and cut some of the samurai, we could also maybe bring back core blade master to give our creatures double strike, which is a card I ended up cutting from the samurai build. So that's where I would go next with this archetype, but I uh, hope you enjoyed nonetheless. I want to thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.